In this video, I want to share with you four ways that you can present your PowerPoint slides during a Zoom meeting. I have a PowerPoint presentation here, uh, just a couple of slides, very simple demonstration, and I have a Zoom meeting running as well going on. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the four options. Option number one is to present it using sharing of the full screen or desktop. And that's the typical way that most people do it because, you know, it's very similar to what we would do if we were in the room with our participants there around the table. So in Zoom, I'm gonna to go to my share screen and I'm going to choose the default, which is the full screen and say share. Now what this does is it shares the entire screen, meaning that if I had anything over here open, let's say my email or a document or anything else, the audience sees it. They see my taskbar, they see everything else. If I don't have PowerPoint full screen, and I don't hear because I wanted you to see that. When I do go to PowerPoint and I say, okay, I wanna run the slideshow, I say, okay, from the beginning. And you'll notice what happens is we have a full screen slideshow which is the typical thing that you get when you're running PowerPoint slideshow in a room. The screen is full and the slide is there. You'll notice that in Zoom, we have a couple of options. It's showing us the little video window. I've covered my camera here, so it's not distracting. And we can always get to the Zoom controls by me simply moving my cursor up to the top here and all the controls drop down. So I can change the sharing, I can do things with the video or the audio and more. Here's where I can see things like the chat if I wanted to see the discussion. And when you click on the chat here, it just opens up the chat window on top of the slideshow, but the audience doesn't see it because they're, they're not seeing anything that is a Zoom control. They're only seeing what's on your screen. Now, in your slideshow, uh, because you're in the slideshow, we simply click through it. So I'll click and we use this morph transition to zoom in on one part of it. And then I have a couple of builds, our power button and our alarm shut off button. When I've done, I'm at the last slide, click, it says end of the slideshow. I hit escape and I'm back to my regular PowerPoint. So the advantage there is it's the most similar to what you would do in a meeting room. And you still have access to all of the, the zoom controls. The, the, challenge here is is that uh, you don't see the chat unless you turn it on. I would caution you though because anytime you put that chat window on while you're presenting it, it can become very distracting because your eye is drawn to that text as it's moving and the temptation is you're going to try and pay attention to that chat instead of paying attention to what you really need to deliver to the audience. The uh, other disadvantage of this is, again, they see everything on your screen before you're presenting unless PowerPoint is in that full screen mode. Option number two is to share just to the slideshow window. Zoom, like many of the platforms, allows you to share just a window that you have open on your desktop. So my PowerPoint window is here, but it's not what I want to share. I want to share the slideshow window. So to do this particular option, what you do is in PowerPoint, you go into slideshow mode first. So I have the entire slideshow, the slide is showing, and then I'll use alt tab to go to the zoom window. Now I go to the zoom window and now I can share my screen. And what I have is I have options of which window to share here. You notice there's a PowerPoint window here, which is the normal editing view but then this is the slideshow window. So you want to always make sure you select the slideshow window and then say share. And so what is now happening is, is that the audience is seeing your slideshow window, but they're not seeing anything else on your computer. So it's a little different from option one. They didn't see if there was anything else on your screen because you didn't share that with them. Now, because it is slideshow, we simply move through the slideshow as we would in a regular slideshow. Click, it does that morph transition, and we have our builds here, and when we're done, we simply hit escape. Now you'll notice that when you hit escape, you get this message from Zoom saying, hey, screen sharing has stopped because the shared window is closed. When you hit escape in slideshow mode in PowerPoint, it closes that slideshow window. Zoom, of course, can't share a window that is no longer open, 
Hence, you get this message. So it's a good reminder to you and nothing else is being shared now, so it goes back to the default video view. So this is a good option when you're sharing. Notice when we were doing the sharing, again, as it is with all the sharing in Zoom, all of your controls are available at the top of the screen. Option number three is to share the editing window of PowerPoint when it has been uh, sort of minimized or given a cleaner look. This is an option that you might consider if you don't have anything uh, that's animated, any, any transitions, anything really other than sort of static slides, this might be an option if you want to use the editing mode, especially if you may want to make some changes you're reviewing with people in the meeting. So the first thing we need to do is to get a sort of minimal type of view to our display in the, the normal PowerPoint editing view. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the vertical divider here for the thumbnails. I'm gonna drag it all the way over till it just says thumbnails. If I had the notes pane open, I would drag that down till it's gone. And then the final thing I do is collapse the ribbon. So on the far right hand side here, there's a little uh, upward pointing arrowhead. You put your cursor over, it says collapse the ribbon. So I click that, collapse the ribbon. And you'll notice that the slides have got bigger. If they didn't, you can just resize them using the sizing handle here. But now we have a much cleaner view of the editing window that we can share with our audience via Zoom. So I'll go back to Zoom and say share the screen and I'm gonna share just this PowerPoint window. I'm now sharing that with the audience. Notice in this particular view, the nice thing is, is if I had some notes, let's say a Word document or something over here on my screen that I wanted to refer to while presenting, I can see it. The slides are only the slides without any animation or transition. So even though I've applied those effects on this set of slides, all I can do is to move through them using my arrow keys or my page up, page down keys. And you'll notice I can move between the slides, but that's all I can do. There's nothing else that I can do. If I had media here, I'd have to manually play it. It would not automatically play. This is a mode that is not as robust as slideshow mode. But it is a mode that might be valuable if you needed to or had a desire to edit some slides as you're going on. As always, we see the Zoom controls are available simply by moving our cursor up to that top and having the Zoom controls drop down. So it's not as good as slideshow mode, but it does allow you to see the notes on the sides. We'll stop sharing. And let's talk about option number four. Option number four is to run the slideshow, but run it within this PowerPoint window. We're gonna reset some of the, I'm gonna show my thumbnails here and I'm going to have my ribbon show up again, pin that ribbon down. And what you can do in PowerPoint, and you may not have seen this before, is you can actually run slideshow within the PowerPoint window. So it doesn't take up the entire screen of your computer. And the way we do that is we go into the slideshow ribbon, we click on set up slideshow, and then we change this option for show type and we change it to browsed by an individual window. And that's the key there, window as opposed to the default, which is screen. So the slideshow is going to be in this window and we click OK. Now what happens when we share the window in Zoom, so I'll go ahead and do that, share just the PowerPoint window, click share. So again, all the audience is seeing is just this one window. Now when I go into slideshow mode though, notice I get slideshow mode. Now yes, there are a couple of control bars at the top and the bottom, little control bars there, but I am in slideshow mode. So when I move through slideshow mode, you'll notice that the transitions or the uh, animations that I've added work the way I expect them to. And when I get to the end again, it's escape to end there. So this can sometimes be a good option because the audience is seeing your slideshow, but on your screen over here, you could have that document with your notes in it, the ideas that you wanted to share, all open, but the audience doesn't see that because all they're seeing is that one window that you're sharing. Of course, you have all the Zoom controls when you go up at the top here too, to see chat or discussion or anything there. 
So I find that this can be a very good option when you have notes that you want to look at in another document. Of course, you could create your notes from PowerPoint by printing out the notes pages, and then just simply have that, let's say, as a PDF sitting on your desktop ready to share. Whenever you're sharing a window, as in option three or option four, that can sometimes save on bandwidth because you're only showing, showing a portion of your screen or sharing a portion of your screen through the internet. And so there's less bandwidth being taken by your sharing as well as by the participants having to take that in on their own screen. So those are four options you can use to share your PowerPoint slides in a Zoom meeting. Look at each one, what the advantages and disadvantages are, to determine which one works for you. And this table summarizes those options and some of the advantages and disadvantages as a reminder. In the video description down below, you'll see a link to an article that has a little more detail about each of these options on my website. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.